Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. Well, it's finally come to that time. We've been doing small things to the Toyota, 93 Toyota. We put a water pump on it a little while back, just put uh, front um, brakes and stuff on it. It is time to do a rebuild. Um, I rebuilt it 76,000 miles ago prior to starting my YouTube channel. So I've got a couple of pictures I'll probably post up right in this area right here somewhere to uh, show you what it looked like. I went through, had uh, a lot of work done on the head, cleaned everything up. I cheated a little bit. I used, I re we honed the cylinders, I re-ringed it and used the stock pistons back, give it a good cleanup, put a clutch in it, put a crank in it, burns. Basically went from the clutch to the radiator cap. It's been doing good, but it has started using some oil, which I could live with a little bit, but now it's started pushing water through it. So I don't know if it's got a bloat head gasket or what, but anyway, we can't have that. It'll end up burning valves and it'll really be a bad day. So I'm gonna go ahead and this will be a multi-part video. Um, I'm gonna have some machine work done, have the block punched out. I'm not sure how much yet, but just wanted to go ahead and get started. We're gonna get it up here in the garage, um, shoot some video as we take stuff apart over the course of the next two or three days. And uh, like I said, this will probably be a multi-part video. Just stay tuned, keep up with it. I'll try to keep them in order the best I can, keep you up to date on what's going on. Had this engine bay nice and clean. And of course, this is a result of driving it. That was 2013 when I rebuilt it and it's uh, 2024. So, you know, I, I think we've done all right to cheat a little bit by not, you know, not punching it out and using the stock pistons with new rings. Stay tuned, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing started. Let's see what happens. Well, it's that time, time to get started. I'm gonna pull this Toyota 22RE. I'm gonna rebuild it. This is day one, video one. I'm gonna try to keep these the best I can in order. We'll go ahead, the first thing we're gonna do, I'm not gonna film every little step of this, but Anytime you're doing anything like this, Toyota ship, don't matter, take the battery. I'm gonna go ahead and take the battery plumb out for one because there's no room in this thing to work. And I've had it out twice, so I know pretty much what is gonna be involved. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the battery out of this thing. Then I went ahead for the sake of the video as well as knowing how to put it back in, hook everything up. Cause that was 10 years ago. Uh, took a lot of photos like this, it's always a good idea. Draw a diagram, take photos. I've got a manual also that I bought, I've got to bring up here, but we're not gonna be worried about that right now. We're just starting to take stuff loose today. So let's go ahead and get the battery out of this thing. And um, we'll start taking the radiator out and some of these other lines. All right, we got the battery out. We got all these uh, breather hoses and tubes off of it. All uh, right, this radiator was put in it in January, and there's a, of course it's gone off this one, but down on the bottom there's a little guard that snaps off that goes around below the fan. So I can leave the shroud and all that on and attach to the radiator and pull it right up out of there, but there's one bolt. If you can see it right down there, if it'll focus, is another right there. Same thing on this other side, take those two, and at that time I should be able to lift this radiator straight up out of there. Anyway, get that out. Then we're gonna start on the more exciting stuff. I gotta get some tape so I can do some labeling. Start unhooking the throttle linkage. We'll take the air conditioner off, like I did last time, the pump rather. Take it off the block and we laid it right over here and didn't lose any of, the, any of that so we didn't have to have the system recharged. Let's hope it works the same this time. All right, let's get this loose. All right, that's got the radiator out. I knew this was coming about two weeks ago. I went and drained the uh, antifreeze out of it and it's been running straight water because I don't care what you do. That looks green, but that's just water. I've been running straight water in this thing. I flushed it three different times. That way that would allow me to not have such a mess in the garage. Antifreeze is a sticky, sticky mess. So I guess the next step I'm gonna do is uh, get my tape and get ready to label some uh, some wires and stuff so I unhook it, but I'm gonna go get my tools and we're gonna take this air conditioner pump, loosen those four bolts, we're gonna take it off and lay it over here safely out of the way because we don't wanna lose the Freon after you get the system recharged. 
Worked last time. Keep your fingers crossed. Let's hope it does again. Okay, I got the air conditioner pump off. I might have been wrong. I may not have laid it up there in that tray, but it was a little tough to get up there. Now, these lines are old, so I pulled it right over there. Um, it has been 10 years since I took this out, but I believe that'll give us room to get in there and take everything else loose and, and clear. There's the air conditioner wire we want to, that's part of the wire harness. We're going to start marking and unplugging all this stuff here. This hose, of course, the motor's still got water in it. Can't help that. But uh, just be sure, I can't stress enough. We're going to pull this hood off, actually, first. Should have done had that done. We're going to go ahead and get these bolts out right here. We're going to take this hood off this thing. Let's go ahead and get that done. All right, we're going to take some of these wires and stuff right here loose. And you always heard that term where I have zip ties are your friend. Apparently, I felt the need to put that back in place with a zip tie. Probably broke the little plastic clip thing. I don't know, been 10 years. All these right here are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm gonna go ahead and get them and bundle them up and just label them. Where is that, what is that thing right there? Front of the intake. All those will come loose and this will basically flop down. We had all this clean and painted under here. This was all painted nice and black and I pressure washed it and cleaned it up, which I'll probably do again. I hate putting something back together dirty. The motor, like I said, I'll, I'll throw some pictures up on the uh, screen of some still shots from the first time I rebuilt this thing. And I have to say, I'm gonna, it, it looked pretty good. It was nice and clean and well, it's not now. Let's go ahead and get those bars marked. All right, I had to back up and think about this just a minute. I couldn't remember why, but I was thinking I took the intake off this thing in the truck. And I remember why now. You can't get down in there because, like I said early on, there's nowhere to get to anything on this. There's wires runs under it. You couldn't get to the latches. That's why I done got most of these bolts out right here. I've got the intake loose, so I've got to go ahead and mark and take all those off the thing, all these right here off of it. So you might not have to. The Toyota mechanics might not take it off. I don't know. I can't get down in there. It's too aggravating. You got to put new gaskets on it anyway. So I'm gonna pull it off right now. That way it'll be easier to put on, take the motor out. You don't have to worry about tearing all that up. Um, all that'll be off there out of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these, I've said it twice, but I'm gonna go ahead and get them marked right now, one through four, get all these lines and stuff laid back over this way, get that intake off, then we'll unplug the rest of those wires. Now, I don't know if you wanna call this next part pro tip or lazy redneck, but the way this is supposed to be made, this is connected. First time I took it apart, I did saw that apart because all of these wires, it's about darn near impossible to get all these things up through there and get down there to get to everything. I can't do it on camera, but you gotta get down there and you gotta pull all those wires out and it's much, much easier if that's sawed in half. So do it every how you want to. Pro tip, smart redneck, lazy redneck. Go ahead, try it out, see what you think. I about got everything marked. We're about to get this side loose. We still got to deal with the starter. So let's get all this loose and lay this bunch of wires here back over this way and we'll get back on the camera here and show you a picture of that. Now, for some of y'all that's saying, he didn't need to cut this right here in half. I want to show you something. Some of these wires, Run the full length all the way to the back end of the transmission. Got to be careful with them because these are old. Might be hung on something. Might have to get down there so it's hung on something right there. Let me check this out. You got to remember all this stuff is old. All you know, it's this is a '93 model, so all these wires have to go back down through that right there. That's the reason I made the comment about taking that section out you've got to feed all these back down through there. And I made one mistake the last time when I had the motor out. There's a pipe right there, if you can see it, that goes right there. I run them on the wrong side of that pipe, which made it a little tougher to get back out this time and made it harder to get in the last time. But I got to thinking about it, but I wasn't about to take it all back up out of there. But anyway, there, there we go. You got to get them. And I'm going to what I, take a uh, bungee cord before I pull the motor. Kind of pull them all over here to the side and stuff. There's plenty of room for the motor to come up out. That ain't no big deal right there, but 
there's the mess of wires that it takes to run this side of the motor. Like I say, everything's pretty well plugged and play. Once you get it down in there where it goes, I mean, it's, it's easy to tell. Let me unravel this just a minute. There's all that. All that goes to the back of the transmission. So that's the reason I said take that out. We'll pull these over to the side and we'll put a zip tie or two and a bungee cord on them. Hold this out of the way whenever we actually go to pull the engine. We're about ready to wrap it up for tonight. Let's take a few of these vacuum lines back here loose and it's getting later. So we're gonna call it quits here in a few minutes. Let's get the passenger side wrapped up on tonight. Well, there's the first half of this video. I think we're gonna call it quits right there for tonight. We've got the motor mount bolts soaking in PB Blaster. I've already got these motor mount bolts over here out. All this water has got to be pulled back over here. Um, Everything is pretty much loose. Got the power steering pump laid over here. Uh, basically, we just like um, motor mount bolt down there, taking the exhaust loose. Of course, we got to get up under it. We'll raise it up on the lift and um, get up under there and put a strap across to hold the trans uh, transmission and everything whenever we separate it. But we've just about got this thing ready to come out. So video one, when I finish this tomorrow, um, We'll have this motor out of there. Like I said, take your time, label everything. That's what all that blue tape is. It all says and means something. Uh, took several pictures. This camera, I may put some of them in here as far as in the video or may not, but take a bunch of pictures <clears throat> so you remember how everything goes. And I have a manual. Don't be afraid to buy one. We'll get into it later when we go to actually do the uh, reassembly process. That way we can torque everything correctly and in the right sequence and all that. Stay tuned. All right, we're back on day two and I've run into a little hiccup trying to do this myself. So I went ahead and I pulled the valve cover off, took the exhaust manifold off. Um, I can't get to those top two bolts by myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the head off the thing in the truck and then pull the block out separate because I can't get, there's two bolts right down there on top that I cannot get to. I can be under the truck and that takes two people on that part. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead, and I've done it once before, whenever it blew the head gasket, I pulled the head off uh, with it in the truck just so I could see what was going on. I may take this uh, intake, risk this intake off, I'm not sure. Probably do that before I try to pull the head off. But uh, let's go ahead and put the camera down and see if I can't get that off. We'll pull this head off, and I'm anxious to see what I can see there. I just hope all the money that I had put into this before that I don't have a crack or something wrong with the head because that would be very disappointing. We've got the rest of the intake off. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this out there. These bolts and places you about to got to be a doggone contortionist to get to, but we've got it off there. I'm gonna go ahead and take the, the head bolts loose. Well, time and chain and all, it doesn't matter. Everything looks good down in there. It doesn't look too, uh, like it's got any slack felt down in there with the screwdriver. But it's gonna come all apart anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the bolt out, just pull the gear forward on that. I'm not gonna worry about that. We'll get it all back in time later. Take these uh, head bolts loose and go ahead and get this head up out of there. That's pretty nasty. Cam doesn't look like it's scarred. Everything looks pretty good there. I mean, it's held good oil pressure the whole time and oil's dirty. Hmm. I'm anxious to see what it looks like up under there. Go ahead and get this off there. Well, since I've got to have the cherry picker down here anyway, I figured instead of lifting that head off manually, we'd go ahead and just hook it up. Lift it off here with this thing, ease it forward. I done took the time and chain and gears loose and let them drop down, because like I said, we'll have this thing all disassembled and it ain't gonna matter anyway. And looks like we still got one hose connected back over there somewhere. Exactly know where it's at. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Oh, we got a ground war. Okay. Here, let me get the ground war off, then we'll get this up out of there. 
Well, there it is. We got it out. I guess we're going to end uh, video one in this series right there. Uh, I went ahead, like I said, and pulled the head off in the truck. It made it easier to get out. Those bolts don't matter. I'm going to be replacing them anyway. So we're going to get this thing, I guess the next video, we're going to get it down there on an engine stand and start taking it apart. Uh, we know we're going to put new pistons and rings in it. We know we're going to have it punched out. We're going to get this thing stripped down and take it and have the uh, head pressure tested, have the block checked, decked, and uh, bored out 20 or 30, probably just whatever the guy needs to do to clean it up. We don't want to go too much. We're not trying to build a drag racer or nothing like that. We just want to get it to where it don't use oil and obviously figure out where the water is going. So anyway, stay tuned, like, share, subscribe to keep up with this. This is a uh, different adventure. I told you a while back we was going to start doing some stuff to this truck and well, this came along sooner than I thought, but we knew it was coming. We're going to get this all cleaned up under here before we put the motor back in, but we'll, we'll cover that in the video as we go. Y'all have a great day. God bless. And we shall see you on the next one.